Hey, I wanted to share with you some skills that I've found really helpful for making fat loss and also staying lean um, easy uh, or possibly even effortless. And even if it's not easy, maybe make it easier and more fun. So are you ready? Here we go. So it's, it's okay, bear, okay, here we go. Bear with me on this, all right? So get ready to maybe be open to the possibility of looking at things a little bit differently, possibly doing things a little bit differently. J just entertaining that possibility, whether or not you take action on it, right? Maybe just like, hmm, maybe if the way I was approaching things or how I was showing up, the environment I was in, et cetera, et cetera, was not working, maybe I'll let go of any thoughts or ideas or structures or conditioning that might be in the way of you actually getting the results that you want. Because sometimes the reason why you're not getting the results that you want or why you're struggling or things are taking something slowing you down is is not why you think so if you can just you know open up to the possibility that maybe there's some things that you hadn't considered um and and some of them are are subtle and some of them are maybe something that you really wouldn't think would work but it just does right so take it from someone who is lean and does find it easy and um, you know, if it's not for you, it's not for you, right? Um, no worries. So, okay, one of the things that I find works extraordinarily well <laughs> is having, like, understanding and, and having my needs met really well. Understanding what my needs are and meeting them extremely well. Or at least as well as I can given the circumstances. And, and because what I find is if your needs aren't fully met, you don't have the energy to operate in a more animated way. And um, we are oftentimes more lethargic and we don't wanna move as much and we feel shitty and we, and we might start to get you know, depressed, et cetera, right? Whereas if we have our needs met, we feel good, we're excited, we're passionate. I mean, you know, I'm using more energy being passionate and talking louder and getting worked up <laughs> than I am just being like, oh, I feel terrible, right? So if we feel terrible, that's fine, we feel terrible, right? But the thing is, is that I think every single time when I've asked myself the question, are my needs met right now? When I was really struggling and having a hard time, I, I, every time I can remember, I think every single time, I think 100% of the time, if I remember correctly, the answer was no, I did not have my needs fully met. And once I got those met, I felt a lot better. Now, it might still be difficult and uncomfortable, but there's like this feeling that goes away that's almost like, I don't know if it's hopelessness, but it's just like a huge struggle and, and like a misery almost, and just like a, oh man, just like a, yeah, just miserable. Um, so, you know, most of the time, if my needs are really w well met, you know, life is, is pretty enjoyable. Of course, there's, you know, a fair amount of the time that things are quite difficult and uncomfortable and, and not fun and stuff like that, depending on, you know, what's needed in the circumstances. But, but I'd say most, most of the time when my needs are well met, I feel a lot better. When you feel a lot better, again, you're going to want to move more and it snowballs, right? So when your needs are, are well met, um, when you've drinking a gallon of water a day or so, for example, when you've gotten enough electrolytes to balance all that, that liquid intake, when you've eaten approximately a gram of protein per pound of body weight each day, when you've gotten in, you know, 10 cups of vegetables and fruits a day, right? When you are listening to your body and eating to satisfaction or to the point where you feel, hmm, I got, I got, I got what I needed from food. Like I'm good to go. If, if you don't experience that satisfaction, but just like, oh, I got what I needed from food. Um, when you're breathing enough, right? Um, when you're getting enough sunlight, when you're getting enough time in nature, when you're getting possibly in water for a lot of us, from that point, we feel so much better and we want to move, whether it's going for a walk or, or actually it feels good to do a little bit of light exercise, right? Um, I've had the experience of being like pretty exhausted and I'd already rested enough, I'd already slept enough. And so I was like, kind of had a feeling like it would be beneficial for me to, um, you know, go lift some weights. And uh, I really didn't want to, but I was like, you know what? Let me just go into the gym. And if you don't like the gym, you can substitute it for something else. Just go into an environment you like. And, and if, you know, if, if movement was needed at that time. And I felt terrible, but I was like, let me just, 
get on the foam roller and kind of give myself a chiropractic adjustment, you know, with my spine. Let me kind of roll around, get some breathing in. Oh, just relax, kind of settle in, get a deeper level of relaxation. All of a sudden I start feeling a little better. I'm like, you know what? I mean, I'm a summarizing process, but you know what? Let me just do like some air squats. Like no weight, like I'm just gonna do like some squats. Like, just let my muscles activate, kind of get the blood flowing. Maybe maybe uh, get the hormones pumping a bit more, etc. cetera. Um, neurotransmitters, whatever. And I start to feel better. And I end up, you know what? Let me just do a little bit of a lightweight. And then I ended up doing like a full weightlifting workout and building muscle. And it felt really good though, was the key. Okay, this is the thing. It's not needed to force it. Because if you're forcing it, your body's saying no and you're doing it anyways. And that's part of the reason why people have a hard time losing fat or, or, or keeping the fat off. It's because they're forcing it. So from the place of having the needs met, if you just follow, even if it's uncomfortable and not necessarily you're really, really what you want to do, but you just know you need to do it, just do it in a gentle way that's not forceful. And what I find is that builds energy and momentum and it starts to feel good. It's like not needed to force. Um, or even pace times, pace wise sometimes. You know, like I remember another time where almost out of energy and I felt like I needed to walk, like a fast walk or a slow run, you know, for me, like barefoot on the beach. And so I am just, I start by just like barely walking, like really slow, right? I'm just like a 30 feet. I'm just like, just slow walking, or maybe even I just start standing. Maybe I go stand like ankle deep or knee deep or something like that in the water, in the ocean um, for 20 seconds or two minutes or three minutes or whatever it might be. And I start to feel better and I end up going for a walk. Um, and then I feel way better. And some, of, and maybe I even end up running, you know, that time. Um, and it feels really good. But it's like if joy and excitement is fueling the process as opposed to something else, it just works a lot better. So just keep in mind that, you know, when there's stagnation and we don't have enough movement, first of all, again, having the needs well met, First, and when I say needs well met, like I, I come across a lot of people who think they have their needs met and clearly, clearly, clearly do not. You know, it's not through no fault of their own. It's just probably grew up never having their needs met or rarely, you know, so, or, you know, at least not consistently having their needs met. And so not really maybe even understanding what their needs are and how good you can feel. It's hard to know if a part of your brain is asleep, what it feels like to have the whole thing online, right? So again, no fault of their own or of our own. Um, I think we've all been through that. But the, the fact is, when they are truly actually well met fully, actually, um, your body is going to feel a lot different and you're going to want to move. And again, no need to force it. So that's the skill. Number one is learning how to get your needs met. And part of that is movement in regards to, could be mobility type work. It could be, again, walking or running or really any type of movement that, it, that feels nourishing and feels cleansing. I find that can often be really effective. One or both of those, um, nourishing or cleansing, or just like, again, a feeling that that's what's needed. Then, then the building muscle, like our muscles need to work. It doesn't mean you have to go to a gym and lift heavy weights, but your muscles crave working. And if they're not craving it, something is, you know, you're, is not functioning ideally, optimally. So just getting the muscles to squeeze and going throughout your, your whole body and making sure all the mu major muscles are squeezing and activating or just using them. You know, you can crawl around on all fours or walk or run or, you know, do lunges or, you know, squats or a million other different things, right? Ride a bike, like climb a tree, <laughs> swing on the jungle gym. Um, but yeah, it, the muscles need to activate and work. Like it's almost like feeding your muscles. Like they're hungry, feed them, let them work and activate. Um, and that's gonna change the whole, in my experience, at least the whole hormonal setup and it can change our whole outlook and perspective on things. And what used to feel like really difficult and uncomfortable and like just really not wanting to do it. Um, some people call that resistance. I'm not sure that's exactly accurate way to, of what's actually happening, but you know, what used to feel like that, um, or whatever, something sim similar to that, or, you know, in that family, at least, um, starts to become something you crave and look forward to and enjoy. And, and that's the thing with the needs is that once you start getting those 
he is meta, the muscle activating of the, of the breath moving and flowing um, of the gallon or so of water a day, plus or minus, depending on circumstances and, you know, with the person, um, all the nutritional needs met. It doesn't have to be some complicated thing. I mean, it's pretty basic. Um, but just giving your body what it's asking for um, from, like, whole, healthy, you know, organic, like, actual non-toxic food. Um, because food that's been altered is going to seduce the senses and it's going to kind of trick you into thinking that it's what you want, but it's actually, it's actually not because it's actually going to give you the opposite of what you want, um, medium and, and long-term, possibly short-term as well. Um, so, you know, it's not always a quick fix. Sometimes you got to weather the storm, right? Um, so yeah, the other skill is, is being able to listen to your body in regards to what types of movements it's wanting and not having to rely on someone to tell you a workout program or whatever, which might be valuable at times. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. That could certainly be um, needed at times or helpful. Um, but listening to your body for wins enough's enough because the way that I experience it is it's almost like, it's like filling up a cup. It's like, or eating a meal. Like, you know, when you eat a meal and then you're satisfied, you don't want any more, or at least you've had enough food and you're like, oh, I'm good. I feel good. Like I, I got my dopamine, <laughs> right? Or whatever other neurotransmitters. Like I'm feeling good after eating this. I don't have any desire to eat more. You can get that for, with movement as well. You can get that with water as well. You can get that with a whole lot of other human needs as well, right? So just having all of those needs, you know, fully met all the way, not 99%, not 90%, 100% fully met. It can just feel absolutely amazing and be a total game changer. And then your body has the energy to eliminate toxicity a lot more effectively. Of course, movement, breathing is going to help you eliminate toxicity that's stored in the fat. And, and, and that is, you know, great. And keep in mind that there's these things called enzymes and a whole lot of other stuff going on in the system that we may not be fully aware of that when it comes online and when the electricity is firing in your body the way that it's designed to, you know, when there's that connection with the earth and with nature, maybe the sky, the atmosphere, um, whatever else, there's that connection is there. Y your body will kick out anything that's not congruent with that. So coming into alignment with that and having that extra energy from your knees being full well, well met, um, will help you eliminate that toxicity. It's really hard to eliminate a lot of toxicity if you don't have the energy. So doing things that give you energy, possibly even looking at what is draining you of energy in general. Maybe it's certain people, maybe it's certain environments, maybe it's certain habits, certain food items, etc. That can be helpful to really honestly look at and maybe even write down all the different things that tend to drain you of energy. I mean, people, you know, it's a different, like every time you meet someone every day, you're talking to a different person, right? It's a new, new person all the time. So, you know, I don't know about people, but you may find, you know, it's time to walk away sometimes, <laughs> right? I think we all know that. And so if there's something you need to walk away from, that can be a big key too, because otherwise you're taking on all the stuff that's not good for you. And that can get stored in your system and lead to fat, more fat than is optimal or then serves you being your most vibrant, alive, healthy self, able to be as fit as you can be to in service of enjoying your life to the fullest, right? It sucks to love to do things and not feel like you're fit enough to do them. So, um, so yeah, and, and that's one of the more kind of blending things together here. So bear with me. But, but these all come into the category of these skills that you're kind of remembering or getting in touch with um, to help you be lean more easily, possibly much, much more easily or effortlessly. So along the lines of not forcing it, like, you know, don't, I see people like jump from, they, they're on step two and they try to go to step eight as a metaphor, right? It's like, okay, well, you're on step two. First of all, let's solidify step two and get you like, solid at step two and then when you're ready maybe tomorrow maybe in a, three days then then take step step three or maybe it's in five minutes whatever you know what i mean like wait till it's time like actually listen to when it's time to take the next step don't force it listen and be informed by what's happening in your system and and you know around you and let that inform when you take the step because from that point 
then you can really solidify in step three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And by the time you do get to step eight, if you do that the whole way through, you're gonna be really, really solid on step seven, you know, when you take that step to step eight, and then you have the opportunity to solidify step eight. And then you're gonna be able to, you know, keep it that way. You won't have to keep going back to step one over and over again and sliding off, you know, because you've actually solidified each of these, you know, parts of the process. So, um, you know, if the step you're on is a slow walk, for example, just in regards to like fitness, that's fine, just walk. Or what, you know, or if you can't walk because there's too much pain, or whatever other limitation in your body, that's fine too. Just find some kind of movement that works for you, but just do it in a way that is loving. Like you're, it's an act of self-love to let your body move how it needs to move because you're gonna be absorbing oxygen and breath, right? Um, and a whole lot of other stuff that's going to help feed you and fuel you and charge your body up and get your battery eventually if you keep going all the way up to 100%. And that 100% battery gets to a level of coherence where it's just going to not allow stuff that's not congruent with who you are to be in your system anymore. It'll get kicked out a lot of times um, effortlessly, or some of the time at least. Um, and then, you know, some other things take some work too, to also to kick them out, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just, I mean, ultimately it's, it's, it's one skill and that's the skill of being able to listen to your system and to what's right for you. And as you navigate that process and bring your material self or like bring your, the body more into alignment with who you are, you know, it's, it's pretty cool because right now it's showing you where you're out of alignment. And so it's actually a gift. Like the things that aren't working are actually a gift because or what's one way to look at it, because it's showing you what's not working. And it's show. And then that through that being shown that you can, you know, make the decision to come back into alignment and, 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 and it'll keep reminding you when you're out of alignment and, and show you, you know, where to put your attention and, and, and it can just restructure and realign things. And some things are going to be, you know, more active and some are more, are more passive, of course, in terms of coming back into alignment, but you're being shown what doesn't work. So if you can take out any, um, self judgment or whatever else, charge around that and just look at it like oh this just doesn't work that's fine like i'm just doing trial and error let me just oh that's clearly not working let me try something else <laughs> so maybe some of this stuff might be something to try or something to lean into more fully or not whatever feels right for you right um so recap so the skills are you know nutritional needs met water getting electrolytes in there too food needs met movement which is both movement you know, breathing type of movement, cardiovascular type movement, and then also building muscles. Those are needs. There's a whole lot of other human needs that, that you know, need to get met too, that you can make sure those are met as well. Um, and then toxicity. Again, you from that place, you can eliminate toxicity more effectively. However, if you have too much toxicity coming in, it, it's really difficult. Like you only... Your body can only do so much <laughs> in terms of eliminating toxicity. So, you know, you may need to change your environment or, yeah, who you're around, who you spend time with, even if it's online. Like, who whose YouTube videos are you watching? Like, you know what I mean? Like, who who are you spending time with and what, what bandwidths or frequencies are you around, right? Um, and, you know, if you're doing, if, if it's not, like, if you're not willing or able to completely change your situation that needs to be changed right now, then of course, obviously you can just spend more time in an environment that works for you. So for me, you know, walking in the forest or at the beach or getting in water or nature or whatever, oftentimes or spending time with, um, you know, certain people. Um, so yeah, the other thing, I don't know if this is a skill, but I also want to mention, um, <laughs> Well, I just had a couple of realizations there that might be useful to share along toxicity um, and something else. So let me back up a second. So there's a lot of like food items and maybe other stuff that here a lot of us are doing right now that are anywhere, you know, highly harmful, somewhat harmful, a little bit harmful, a little bit toxic. You know, it could be a little bit or a lot along that spectrum. And, and not realizing it again. So a lot of the, that has to do, we got the needs met side, then we got our body's ability to cleanse and eliminate, 
So, you know, being able to identify and truly actually being honest, as painful as it might be, or as uncomfortable as it might be, difficult as it might be about what doesn't serve you and being willing to charge your battery up until you feel strong enough and charged enough to actually let go of what no longer serves. Um, and not using that as a, you know, as a crutch or like an escape, like not like, wait, oh, I'm not ready yet. Like sometimes we're not fully ready. We just need to do it. It's time to do it. Right. So really uh, being honest about the timing as well, about okay, you're, you're ready for step four. Like it's time to take step four. And now you're ready for step five. Okay. To do it. Like there's, you know, it's, sometimes it's just time to do it. And the thing is, is that, you know, don't avoid doing what needs to be done that you're going to regret later, right? Because if you're surfing and there's a wave to catch, sometimes there's not another wave after that. And if you miss it, you miss it. So, you know, I don't mean to sound dramatic or something, but sometimes it's time now and you need to take action right now um, or as soon as possible. And if you don't, you might regret it. So I'd highly recommend yeah, doing what needs to be done ASAP, all of it, whether that's yeah, the nourishment side or the cleansing side or the, you know, putting yourself in a different environment side, which would accomplish both nourishing and cleansing. Um, so yeah, um, there's certain electromagnetic frequencies that can be very harmful for biology that can allow it to function at not as a coherent, not on a bandwidth that's in alignment with, you know, optimal health. So, you know, being aware of that and, and doing your best to, you know, take precautions with that and use things that help protect you from those frequencies as well as just, yeah, not, of course not being around them as much and then et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of so-called food isn't really food. It's so highly altered that it's something else or it's food for something, but not food for you. So careful what you're feeding, right? In your system. <laughs> and I don't even remember what the other thing I was going to say after the toxicity thing, um, in regards to skills, I, uh, I guess it's, yeah, it's again going, it's really listening. It's your ability to listen to what's right for you and what isn't. And the thing is, is that the body's been compromised. And so it's not going to be hundred percent accurate. It's probably going to be several times more accurate than the mind, if not more than several times more accurate. Um, because it hasn't been hijacked to the same degree, but it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, contaminated to a degree. So just keep in mind, your body's not, just as a reminder, you know, like your body's not going to be hundred percent accurate on decisions or on what's right for you, but just doing your best to navigate. And when you realize something is not right, like as quickly as possible, extricating yourself from that situation, saying no, where you need to say no, et cetera. Like, cause you know, it's better to be afraid of saying no and say it when you need to, or, you know, say some, speak up and say what needs to be said or not say what needs to not be said, you know, move your, where you need to move, adjust what you need to adjust. Even if it sucks short term, the alternative is probably going to turn out a lot worse than you might even realize now. So, you know, it can, can be beyond critical to truly listen to what's a right, what's a yes and a no for you. So, so yeah, that's the skills. Get better and better at nourishing yourself. Give your body what it needs to eliminate effectively. Spend time with people who are, I guess that was the last piece from before. I think I remembered. Um, spend time with people who are already good at what you want, right? Like when I um, wanted to learn how to do poker professionally, which I did in the past for a few years, I made a bunch of money doing that. Um, I spent time with people who were already making a bunch of money doing that, right? And I watched their videos and etc. So if I wanted to get good at understanding how the body worked, I went and find, from my perspective, the people that are ahead of their time, best in the world at understanding human physiology and what works and what gets results, spent time with, spent years with them, right? Um, you know, et cetera. So that's what I'd recommend. Um, be around the people who are already doing well what you want.